Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Brony Debates. We're going to read some more Equestria Daily tonight. And tonight I'm joined by the beautiful Princess Heather Blossom. How are you doing tonight? Doing pretty good. Just going to do my nails while we talk. Nice. And I'm also joined by DJ Skywalker. How you been, man? Hello, it is I, the microwave pony. <laughs> the microwave. Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll, we'll debate that if we have time at the... It, like I don't want to, and I don't want to spoil it. So just know this chat. He is the microwave pony, and he is wrong. We'll get to it later, though. <laughs> I see Amethyst Majesty in the chat says hello, every pony. And then where did every pony go? So maybe I really was streaming for that minute there, where I, I mean, the go, the the go live button was active, but like I was, uh, the OBS was streaming to the YouTube, but it wasn't live, so. Were you able to see us, Amethyst? I don't. I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, uh, we'll we'll pick up right where we left off last time, with um, this community soapbox here, Lyra and Bon Bon significance uh, for LGBT, uh, celestial children, and more. Uh, Ly uh, Linara S says hi, Brawny. Hey, how you doing? All right, so. Um, here we go with where we got the, uh, this familiar character here is uh, is double C and he tends to write us some cringy fan fictions. DJ, you're our fan fiction guy. Do you want to do you want to tackle this one? Uh, do you want me to just read it in full first or just skim it and yeah, get so, thoughts on it? So, yeah, we'll we'll read it, uh, read it out loud and we'll commentate as we go. OK. All right. Let me go. Take a look here. You might want to zoom in a little, honey. I feel like the text on screen is very small. You know what? You're probably right. Let me do that. And make sure chat can see it, too. Yeah, they should be able to see it. Okay. Okay. We got Shall eight people watching. Yeah, go for it. All right. Celestia and, R and Luna had ruled Equestria since the start of the show until they passed the crown to Twilight in the final episode. There are many fans who think the sister should have retired and given to a, given it to a princess with some problems. Missing an, missing an yeah, S that, there on the Yeah, that, that's me. <laughs> they should not have retired. It also showed in Gen 5 of what Opaline did to Equestria. There are still many questions of if or not Celestia and Luna fought along with the main six against Opaline. Before season well, 9... Gen season... 5 is in canon. Gen <laughs> Five's not even real. Before Season 9, fans had made the next generation of the main six and others being married and having kids. Celestia and Luna are among them, with them being paired off... Again, typos. <laughs> whom they thought can work out. Or what the comics teased and having kids would one day take the throne. Yeah, so that's the thing about Double C. is uh, He doesn't check. He doesn't spell check himself. And sometimes he gets very difficult to read. We've run into this character a few times on this show. I think they would at least fix typos before they post this, but uh, all right, that's why go they ahead. have editors? <laughs> yeah. Celestia only had one love, and that is Mir Somber from IDW Comics. They were so in love that when they said their final goodbye, it hurt badly. This love tragedy felt really sad for Celestia and to her fans who wanted to see her married and have kids. However, in my opinion, Mir Somber would like to see Celestia and find someone else who would love her in the same way he did. Hmm. Well, yeah, that. sure. Like probably, right. you know, in the last in his last few uh not evil times, he probably would be like, "Go find happiness again, Sarastia." But sure, sure. This is all pretty much just been recap. Where's he going with this? Yep. And well, let's see where it goes. We have our own opinions of which characters in the show the royal sister are shipped with. But what Hasbro slash IDW could have done is a hold con is hold a contest to allow a fan OC, and like they did in the past, with the exception of losing rights to the character. Pump the brakes. No, we, we've, we have enough comic history to know that that, hey, get your character in the comic has never ended well. Yeah, they probably kill it off. They they kill it off. There's always a freaking legal battle over rights. It, 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 stuff will end up getting canceled. I mean, the last time that's ended, it, we got anything close to a good outcome with like, hey, uh, submit your fan characters type of deal. It ended up becoming Venom. But even then, 
like that. I'll bet you that guy that made the Venom character, that made the symbiote character, is pissed because you know they screwed Dude, him out of so much money. I didn't know that was a money. fan thing. Yeah. I don't know. That's yeah. amazing. Of course, and now I don't even know that. Like, that's not even a thing people, like, say. Exactly. The dude who made Venom did not get his credit. And, like, Venom's a cool character, and look what it turned into, but somebody had to get screwed for us to get Venom, and I'd rather that not happen. So, we're definitely not doing that. Mm -hmm. They could also be referring to, like, the Make-A-Wish ones that were in the show. Oh, well, yeah. that I can understand because those are inconsequential. But here's here's arguably the most important character in the whole show. And we're going to ship it with your OC, right? Any, it, there's going to be one winner who's going to get screwed out of so much money and never get the credit. And there's going to be a legal battle it's gonna be, over And it's going to be the most hated character because all and the Celestia stands would be like, it should have been me. And there's going to be a million losers and they're, and they're going to be losers about it. And they're going to be, and then they're going to, you know, get on Twitter and get on Tumblr. And, oh, this, uh, this design is problematic because it's a blue Pegasus and uh, the color blue gives my mother seizures. I literally saw this on Tumblr one time. There were, there, there were like constantly, this, this chick was trying to get Tumblr to change their color scheme because blue gave her mother seizures and it was retarded you can change it you can change the theme of tumblr from what i understand can't you yeah i don't yeah, know literally that would, like, literally if you have require, a night mode it'll turn black that would require a double digit iq with which uh, most twitter and tumblr users are not capable of so that's right, that's let's, let's see where he's going here all right Surprising that they never tried to have an OC be a supportive character than a background character that would help the main six and others and perhaps being a love interest. Well, we just went over why that's a bad idea. No one wants your OC in the show. <laughs> we have seen on Fim Fiction, DeviantArt, and Derpy Burrow of some OCs that fans have put a lot of development of making them true love interests. That matters very little. Uh, now there Get are a some... job on the show staff. Get a job on the show staff and pitch it. That's what you mm. have to do. Yeah, but then you turn out like Powerpuff Girls 2016. No one wants that. Well, hey, look, there's an example of someone doing that. No one liked that. Uh, to be if... fair, he wasn't the one who did that. That was the staff doing it to make fun of him. I wonder oh. if, uh, well, that's news to me. So I'm. Uh, that's not a, th thank God. He wasn't involved in the design as... or the writing. That's, thank God that's not as bad as I thought it was then. But uh, I wonder that's if, really... um, I wonder if Mixmaster ever applied to uh, Hasbro like I told him to. <laughs> <laughs> probably not i heard he i heard as soon as that stream was over he he got right back on his nonsense and doubled down in ways that, <laughs> in ways i would have never imagined uh go oh, ahead the, uh, bring, the, the redo season nine guy yeah yeah, yeah. save mlp right. guy Oy. now there are some who think the royal sisters are better off single and their children are, are their subjects especially twilight and cadence there are some like me who believe they deserve a chance to find their special someone and have kids much like the main six deserve. This way, Twilight and Spike would stay in Ponyville with their friends and future partners. Also, the School of Friendship would also serve to teach the young royals to be better leaders with Celestia, Luna, Cadence, and Twilight children being there. I gotta put a Greek problem this. Have Has this person ever considered that not everyone is re interested in romantic relationships or children? Like, I'm not even trying to make it a rep thing. I'm just saying it's kind of presumptuous for you to assume this is what everyone wants. Like, Indeed. And I'm like, not every person and also not every character needs to get married and have a whole bunch of babies for you, you know? And the, the, the concept of destiny was very prevalent in this show. And when you live up to your destiny in the show is, um, is really when you're the happiest, right? Because you've got a purpose... It's actually a very Christian concept, too. You, you've got your purpose in life, and when you fulfill your purpose is when you're at your best and you're happiest and things like that. Celestia's destiny was to rule Equestria, you know, until Twilight could take over. And she did. And she was, de you know, until it was time for Twilight to take over, she seemed to be enjoying her position for the most part. Um... And there's also the, 
you know, we see this explored a lot in fan fiction too. There's also, you know, just the question of the immortality aspect and what's she going to do? Is she going to have one, you know, a uh, husband that she loves forever and, and, uh, you know, and, and never remarries after he lives out his natural life of, we'll say 80 to a hundred years, but she's, uh, she's 1100 going on 1200 years old. Uh, or does she just cycle through a husband once a century, something like that? And how many has she had or how emotionally attached does she get to them? Can she even like see, uh, someone as a husband because like any husband that she had, would have grown up under her rule. So you're, here's this, you know, say it's a noble, right? It's a, it's, it's a noble in, in Canterlot court. And, and one day one of the nobles goes, Hey, here's my, here's my son, right? He was just born. And then you blink and the, and this, this, uh, infant is now 20 and Celestia is like, Oh, he's, he's kind of a looker, isn't he? <laughs> and, uh, and then, you know, so like, I, there is no healthy person out there that that uh, can see someone grow up from infancy and then become attracted to that person. You know, so we got some major flaws in this logic here. Does anybody have any thoughts on this? I will say I've read many a fan fiction and seen fan art of Celestia paired up with like somebody, whether it's a canonical character or someone they make up and it's fun. It can be fun, but I don't think Canon could have handled doing that with mm -hmm. Celestia. DJ, what do you think? Uh, I've actually never put it together. <laughs> Basically watching them grow up just to marry them. Uh, it's like classic fantasy fiction. Uh, fiction right there. I have seen. I have seen a fan, like a fan comic that does that. Uh, what was their name? The one that did like a uh, diaries of the uh, changeling princess, a young changeling queen. Uh, oh, they did yeah. one where yeah, Xander. they had another comic. Yeah, they had another comic where Celestia had a lover who would you know live a natural life and stuff but they would always get reincarnated and she'd find them again and she'd what's weird is that she would shapeshift to become a child and to be like their childhood friend and they'd eventually be romantic again and it, it was such a weird concept to be like she like looked in the eye of a child and saw oh it's my reincarnated lover they came back again yay <laughs> basically yeah. link and zelda zelda were immortal yeah it's weird the um there was there is one series of of uh fan fictions that I think handles this concept very well it's um I remember the main character's name is Beans Baked Beans I think DJ put me on this series actually by and I remember the uh the the author's name is Irrespective and uh let's see here uh, I'm going to try to find it real quick. Oh, gosh darn it. I know I'm following this guy on film fiction. Where's the... There it is. Irrespective. Okay, this knows, knows. Oh, no, wait. It's no, knows, knows. As in, no knows the, the body part, and then knows as in knows something. So, that was, uh, and uh, I'll break this down for you guys. Is uh, this, this story, you know, tackles pretty much what we're talking about here in the silliest way possible. Uh, but it's very wholesome, very nice. And, and uh, what, what this sort of turns out to be is that um, they talk about Luna far off in the past before she was banished had a husband and actually had a daughter that, of course, since then has also aged and died. Um, 
when she's just like outlived everybody, but she's still even thousands of years later, very close to her original husband. And uh, they, they talk about that. So if you're, if you want to see this, this concept tackled, right, go read the link. I just put in the chat there. Uh, and, and Edgardo uh, J says it has a sequel. Yes, it does. It's actually a whole series. I'm uh, quite a bit behind on it because I don't really have time to read uh, film fiction anymore. Um, I was reading a little bit today, but I was it, that was a different, unrelated story. Uh, so, yeah, I, I got to catch up. I think I'm like three or four stories behind on the series. It's a good series. Uh, did we finish this one or, or uh, did uh, we not? no? There's still there's still a few lines left. <coughs> All right, what I wanted to bring, I wanted to bring up one of the parts I just read. Yeah. Um, the Twilight and Spike stay in Ponyville part. I have seen a lot of people seem to have an issue with this, but I've always thought this was one of the best parts of the finale. It's not because they're separated, but because it tackles that separation, and on mm. how much they want her that her friends want her to move on to this greatest opportunity of her life but they're gonna miss her it's not done easily but i think it's one of the best lessons they've ever done for the show and it's a great one to go out on and i don't yeah. i don't seem i don't see a lot of people seeming to understand that lesson that was taught and seem to obsess that twilight and spike need to stay in ponyville yeah, like, they, they gotta accept that, like, life has to kind of go in different directions sometimes. Sometimes you get a job in a different city, and you should go and pursue that opportunity. Because if you have a strong enough friendship, it will survive you going just a distance away, you know? Yep. It's just one of those uh, things where, like, I always see it, but, like, I don't get where they're missing the importance of it. People aren't always like, you know, thinking about the nuance of the situation, you know, like I it's like one of those things. It's why I get frustrated in a lot of shows where someone gives up a good promotion or gives up a scholarship or something all because they want to stay with like their high school boyfriend or their group of friends in their small town. I'm like, no, no, that was a that was a road to bigger and greater things, experiences that you have just thrown away an opportunity that doesn't happen for everybody every day. It is such a rare occurrence and you threw it away. You don't throw things away like that. It's just or at least if you're smart, you wouldn't. I hate those things. Yeah. Although I have always thought it weird. It's kind of antithetical to another season nine episode, which was the one with Scootaloo's parents. Hey, in that situation, they trying to get they Scootaloo weren't... to not move. <laughs> yeah, but they weren't bringing her for greater opportunities for her. It was ultimately just a selfish move because they were like, uh, oh, we're just going to uproot the life you've built here without us because we're never around for our daughter to go do what we want to do. Hmm. Anyway, I continue reading. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so we read the school. Unknown how many kids they will have, both Celestia and Luna would be happy to teach them to perform their respective duties when they are he and husbands retired. Celestia, Luna, Sunset, Starlight, and the main six children, along with Luster Dawn and her friends, would have made Opalyn's har plans, ha plans hard. Why is Sunset involved in this? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, She's not involved in Equestria. That's, that's something this guy does a lot. He just kind of... He, he, if he if you if you let him write long enough, you're not going to know what he's talking about anymore. Question, daily editors, fix this. You don't have to post <laughs> it word for word what this person says. You can at least fix the typos. <laughs> I have offered my services. Nobody's reached out yet. <laughs> uh, let's see here. But yeah, no, uh, nobody nobody wants anything to do with me because I'm controversial. I make videos like this. I make live streams like this. Uh, so let's uh, let's see the chat here. Uh, Nathan Duazo says, how is it going, dudes and dudette? Uh, Trent says he can't stay because his aunt's here. Paladin Pony T says, uh, my OC is Princess Celestia's son, so I understand this cringe. Um, Amethyst Majesty says, oh, God, I hate P uh, PPG-16. And uh, Rusty just said, hey, y'all, what did I miss? Uh, Edgardo says, uh, Celestia did adopt and raise Cadence, so I don't think her wanting to have kids is entirely out of the table, even if it is just adoption again. 
So that's, that, you know, that's you have I a point, about. which, yeah, you have a point, but like maybe she, you, we have no idea. Like she could have done it that once and been like, eh, not really into it anymore. Or yeah, she could be into children. That doesn't exactly mean that she wants a romantic relationship. I'm just saying. Ains was, was also and, already a teenager. Yeah, she, like, that's, there's not much raising that needs to be done from there. And At least orphan. according to the books and comics. Yeah. Yeah, so, and an orphan, so probably could have used the guidance. And also, hey, here's suddenly this new alicorn that, that uh, you know, is probably going to play into my plans or, you know, might be able to help me run the kingdom later. There's something else is going to come up. I better make sure that, that she's ready for this power that she's about to inherit uh so that would definitely you think she knew sense. she was the crystal princess maybe i mean she so has, has has had visions in the past we know that yeah well she did she did also have a crystal heart on her ass so you yeah. know uh, it, powers of deduction might imply the, the freaking uh beginning of season three of the crystal empire that one guard runs in and goes and goes princess celestia it has returned right so she that if we look back on that with a sort of rev, of a revisionist lens we could be like okay uh celestia knew this was going to happen so and then she finds cadence who you know matches the description of of the you know crystal princess in what way i don't know is somebody who can who can handle the crystal heart is going to be connected to it is going to be significant isn't uh, when it returns is a reincarnation of the crystal princess who the frig knows but she knows about it and uh so tells her guards hey this is what we're looking for when it happens you come tell me right away it has returned and we're just supposed to know what that means um willie's in uh says uh there was one character who was destined to have an on-screen relationship princess cadence the hasbro gods decreed you shall be wed and procreate and thus it was so it would be so funny if the princess of love turned out to be an asexual ironic <laughs> well, i would bring up pinky against him but he did say on screen and we don't really oh, yeah. see pinky's relationship on screen also i want to correct myself uh not asexual aromantic is what i meant to say well, then she wouldn't like be she, the princess alone. I mean, that would kind of. Well, like, you know what? She could be the. She could be like someone who likes to match up other people, but for herself, she's like, I feel no romantic inclinations, but I could sure as hell like because maybe it's because of that objectivity. She's just like, I can. I know romance when I see it because it doesn't have to do with me. I don't know. Heather, be Heather, we, more already, than her current Heather we already did that and called it Sweetie Bloom. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what happens in that situation. That you, yeah, we we know what that's like. So get out of here with that. Oh, let's see here. Uh, what else? What else we got? Uh, Paladin Pony wants to know if I read his uh, stuff on fan fiction. When I saw that, I actually went over to fan fiction and searched your name, and I found your thing. And I scrolled, and I found your page, and I scrolled through it, and apparently, I have read. Uh, your story endure, enduring eternity. Uh, that's the only one that had any checks on it. So uh, I, I read through that. I don't remember anything about it, and I'm sorry. <laughs> so let's see here. Let's move on to the next one. Also, uh, I just want to say hi to my friend Head Frecker who's in the chat. Oh, hey, Head Frecker. Welcome. All right, so let's say, oh, Rusty says, I think they want Twilight and Spike to stay in Ponyville because they can't handle change. I'm moving to Canterlot, and the fear of dread was coming to similar how fans were feeling. Yeah, that, that makes sense. That just makes it uh, a great episode. Fans yeah. are in denial to this day. Mm -hmm. Shatira McCullough says, hey, how are you doing today? That's a name I haven't seen in the chat before, so welcome to the show. I hope you're enjoying yourself. I am holding up. We'll We'll, we'll put it that way. And uh, these guys say they're doing all right. So uh, let me see. Celestia is evil for banishing Luna. I want to read this one. You guys ready? Sure. Sure, sure. All right. It is impossible to ignore the complex relationship between Princess Celestia and Princess Luna. While Celestia is often revered as the benevolent 
holy frick, the benevolent ruler of Equestria. There is a lingering question that haunts many fans. Was Celestia truly justified in banishing Luna to the moon? Some argue that Celestia's actions were unnecessary and harsh, especially considering Luna's cries for attention and validation. Interesting. Um, I, have thought, I have thoughts on that. Uh, tell me, the wording tell me on that you... makes things very bad. The what? I, I don't like that wording. Yeah, so we'll come um, back to that in a second. Um, instead of addressing Luna's feelings of neglect and insecurity, Celestia chose to exile her sister to the moon, leaving a dark shadow over Equestria for a thousand years. What the frick are you talking about? Uh, many fans wonder if things could have been different if Celestia had taken time to listen to Luna's concerns and offer her support and understanding Look. she desperately needed. You look, Luna, I'm a Luna stan as much as the next person, but you, did you miss the part where she assaulted Celestia first? Like, there's a time to talk it out, and and maybe she could have said something other than, hey, lower the moon. Or maybe she could have been like, hey, what's up, man? What's the dealio? Maybe, but, you know, she, then freaking Nightmare Moon was just like, fuck you, and shot a gun at her. And then I was just like, uh, at that point, I'd probably also be like, okay. Shot a I gun might, at I her. I love my the, sister. I love I the, I love the mental. That, I, I love the mental uh, image of of Nightmare Moon just like whipping out a gun. I'm picturing Nightmare Moon trying to hold a Glock 19 in between her hooves and figure out a way to fire to pull the trigger she with her tongue. She has magic, Bronny. She has magic. That's not even an issue. Who I'm just needs saying, magic when you have a gun? You use magic exactly, to pull the though. trigger. But I'm just saying, if like if one of if one of my siblings was just like I'm mentally upset, and I was like, what the fuck? And they then they pointed a gun at my head and started to shoot at me. I might banish them too. I might banish them. Yeah. Also, Brian, I mean, we I... all we all know we all know Nightmare Moon would have a shotgun, not a pistol. <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah, we're gonna give her a shotgun. How'd you fucking miss? <laughs> <laughs> now you got me. Now everywhere. you got me. Now you got me imagining Nightmare Moon like muzzle loading a musket. It no, no, he finds out his dear sister. <laughs> yeah. Celestia needs to uh, resort to the elements of harmony at the top of the stairs, loaded with grape shot. <laughs> it's like I don't know how to work these things alone. I'm just gonna stick them in the musket. <laughs> All right, um, let's see here. After all, every pony cringe craves love and attention, even princesses. The story of Celestia and Luna serves as a reminder that even those in positions of power can make mistakes and that communication and empathy are crucial in maintaining healthy relationships. If Princess I mean, that's Celestia, true. It is true. And, and, and it is, that is, you know, this, their story is definitely a cautionary tale of that very type of thing. Uh, let's see here. Perhaps if Celestia had shown Luna more attention and compassion, the tragic events that unfolded could have been avoided. The bond between the two sisters remained unbroken. Okay, now let me explain to you why that's wrong. So I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, Celestia is not evil for banishing Luna. Now, we will say this. We don't really know what to what extent Celestia... Uh, tried to reason with her. And it wasn't that Luna was missing Celestia's affection that caused her to, to become jealous. It was that no, it was that none of her subjects admired her. They were afraid of the night. They shunned the night. They were, they slept during the night and didn't appreciate the work that Luna had put into raising the moon. And the you know the stars and things of that nature, right? So they, uh, the 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 equestrians did not appreciate the moon, and she got jealous that everybody appreciated Celestia. I feel like in the prologue of the first episode, they said Celestia pleaded with her sister, and uh, but you know Luna hard. So it's really sounded to me like Luna was being bullheaded about it and, and not, and really not being grateful for what she did have, which was her sister or understanding her role at the time of like, uh, being, uh, helping people through their dreams. Right. And she, she ended up doing that at this in like season three. Right. So we got, and when someone attacks you, 
your right to life is forfeit. That's how self-defense works. And if you're dealing with this thing that is this, you know, deity and you're not strong enough to stop it or subdue it, then you're going to have to go get the magic uh, nuke. We also have Artifact. very little, we have no knowledge that Celestia intended to banish her to the moon. She just knew she wasn't strong enough to take on Luna basically unchained. And so I went to the elements because it was the only bonus yeah, like the last she could have to her power. She, the last time she used the freaking elements of harmony, it turned Discord into stone. And that was another thing too. Like, I, uh, like we're lucky that the elements worked for just Celestia because prior to that, Celestia uh, uh, always used the elements with Luna, and like Celestia had three of them, and Luna had the other three. So that's um, but but yeah, there uh, there's the turn to stone. There's the banish to the moon. There's um, you know, the purification that it did when Twilight used them in the first uh, in the in the second episode. There's uh, it, the we don't really know how the elements of harmony work aside from that they they pure they purify evil. So unless unless you know um there's some control in the intention there, like with Discord. Okay, we got to get rid of this guy. Oh, they use the elements against Sombra, too. Don't forget that. We got to get uh, rid of this. What we elements gotta... in there? They didn't They didn't say they used the oh. elements. All you saw was Celestia and Luna, and they used magic, and then they he was fucking out. Hmm, with the, with we the never way... see them using the elements against Sombra. Yeah. They're they're like backlit and there's like this rainbow this multi-hued beam coming off of putting nah, the horns together. There was together, not which... a rainbow. Not in well, the somber flashback, no. no. No, not a rainbow, but it was like a multi-hued thing. Like kinda looked like it would have been a rainbow if they had not been so uh uh starkly backlit. I'm actually gonna look this scene up right now. Hold on. The, it looked like the elements of harmony to me. Right, it with just some light and some different lighting. Um, but yeah, in those cases, we got to get rid of this guy. So they get rid of this guy in Discord, Sombra. Um, you know, I don't, but Celestia, maybe Celestia is like, I don't want to get rid of Luna. So I'm just going to put her somewhere where she can't hurt anybody until we can deal with this later. And then, so instead of turning Luna to stone, she uses the extra power boost to banish her to the moon. Uh, and then Luna, and then Nightmare Moon comes back, but now Luna's had a thousand years to think about what she's done. She misses her sister, so she Nightmare Moon is still in control, but she wants to be purified, or or maybe uh, Twilight wanted to purify her or something like that, it, it, you know, help her help her through that. So there's a I could sit here and and head cannon about the, those are my head cannons really I, I don't know if i could do it all day i only really came up with like th three possibilities here what do you guys think i'm looking for the scene right now where they take down sombra should be pretty early into the season three premiere it, it was like three and a half ish minutes in hold on yeah there second. he is there he is. Hold on, I'll share the screen with you guys so you can see it. I'm sorry, uh, chat, you won't be able to see it because we could get a hang on if you, for doing that. Uh, here, let me. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna do it instead. Actually, uh, you're gonna do it. All right. Well, yeah. Do you so want the I, video? King Sombra backstory. I, no, no, that's I'm, not gonna work because I tried and you'll get the fucking this shit. Oh, I I see what's up. Okay. Hold on, I put it in the waiting room just so like the full episode is there and go to like three forty. Okay, let me go uh let me go see. All right, so uh Yeah, like go me... to three forty. Yep, now OBS. Donate to donate to the stream so I can uh get a, a Steam Deck. Uh, 340 you say okay so here we go so there's my man Sombra 
enslaving everyone. See, okay, there's so no we... elements of harmony, just their magic. All right. I mean, look at that. That's a ra they're backlit though, and that's a rainbow. If they were, if they were gonna say, "Hey, we use the elements of harmony to do this," they would have said that. It's also not even the hue of the elements. Also, like they would be holding the elements, like they did the time they did it with Discord. Like we've seen them use it on Discord, and it doesn't look like this. Mm, you know, I think you've got a point. Okay, I'll, it really I'll... just looks like a merger of their magic. I mean, you see purple, blue, yellow, and a yeah, it's not yellow. like a true rainbow. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's interesting here. And then they seal them away. Okay, so that's that's something else. All right, never mind me. <laughs> um, womp, womp. Yeah. Womp, womp. All right, so let's see here. Uh, Edgardo says, I always figured the elements of harmony uh, results were always dependent on the situation not the user specifically necessarily. So the result of their blasting tends to vary because of that. Uh, Rusty says, Nightmare Moon pulling a piece to pop a cap into the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Harriman, Harriman uh, says, as the founding alicorns intended. <laughs> I, I need know. I need to go find that copy pasta and ponify it now, just and post it to Twitter. That's what I need to do. Uh, Willie Zinn says Nightmare Moon obviously has a, Kle a Kleshnikov with a night vision scope. Would she need a night vision scope? She has. She doesn't. She have that pre-installed. If I, if I mean, we she ever literally have nighttime predator eyes. If we ever get around, they do. if we ever get around to clipping these uh, this stream, we need to like Photoshop all these insane visuals that we're coming up with. <laughs> um, You're gonna be so great. Yeah, Shatira McCullough says you are not wrong. I don't know what she's saying. I'm not wrong about. Uh, Headfrecker says, "Wow, how wrong!" And I have no idea what Headfrecker is referring to. There's Using too much Headfreckers. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, um, it's, using too much violence in self-defense is actually illegal, and you can go to jail for it. Sometimes, like, yeah, like yeah. if you knocked the person down and were able to get away, that's that's. And but instead, you decided to stay and kick them in the ribs a whole bunch of times. I could see how that would get you arrested. Yeah, but um. No, if somebody that just, wasn't excessive violence, though, Celestia did not use excessive violence. No, here's he, that's exactly right. Nightmare Moon was trying to kill her, and when someone is trying to kill you, you have the right to kill them back. That's how that works. It's like you, you give them an Uno reverse, it's like I'm gonna kill you. No, you, yeah, God, I'm like that one meme, this, call an ambulance. But not for me. But not for me. <laughs> oh, let's see here. Uh, Edgardo says Luna uh, was... Oh, wait. Uh, Rusty says both princesses are prone to act like bratty teenagers <laughs> even in modern times. That was something I was saying because they went on that vacation together. Um, they went on that vacation together and we had the royal problem episode. I still and want the history of Celestia's fear with chickens, dang it. Yeah, I want the backstory to that. <laughs> <laughs> they were both they were both just acting like sisters that didn't really get along. So yeah, they had this huge they fight. Are. They had this huge fight a thousand years ago, and now they're back and they missed each other and they're happy to be back together. But they never tackled the root of the problem. <laughs> so what now they just need is like a the parental figure. Again. Yeah. Like, you put me on the trip, and I'd be like, I swear to God, if you guys start again, we're turning right back around and going to Canterlot. I cannot deal with this shit. It's they should have had Starswell on that episode, honestly. Oh, yeah. That would have been hilarious. I that would have been hilarious. Me, Especially because like, he was their teacher. And, and like, I could just imagine Starswell Star, Star coming in, they're bickering. He just grabs them by the ears and starts pulling them. I I want Star Swirl to like it's gonna be that one John Mulaney bit where they're both like arguing the back, but then they see a freaking Mick Pony McDonald's and they're like McDonald's McDonald's and then he pulls up and just orders one black coffee and drives off. 
<laughs> I'm just imagining Stars while trying to hold on to them with those stupid kid leashes. Oh, like, no. God, just full it. grown ponies, and they, <laughs> he's basically just being dragged around. That's hilarious. Yeah. No, it should be me. I should be the I should be the pony, the Alicorn disciplinarian. I could fight an Alicorn. I, I like to think that Star Swirl, what, as soon as they came back, the reason he was mad was not because the Shadow of Ponies had, like the sh Shadow Pony or whatever got unleashed. He'd be like, ah, oh, great. Now I have to father figure these fucking Alicorns again. And he just rolled up a newspaper. No, be nice to your sister. You, stop complaining. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, Edgardo says Luna was lashing out, desperate and felt unappreciated, thus was vulnerable to corruption and terrible decision-making. That, that does seem to happen. Vulnerable people. That's why they get preyed upon. We do see yep. Luna has a lot of insecurities, especially in her first full appearance after the Nightmare Moon thing. I could probably convince Luna to do drugs. <laughs> Where the frick did this come from? She's vulnerable and self-conscious. I'll tell her everyone thinks she's cool if she does a little bit of weed and suddenly we got Pothead Luna on our hands. Now, Luna's, Luna will eventually, Luna would probably fall to heroin after that. It was weed probably wouldn't last person. very long. I'm going to tell Celestia. I'd be like, Celestia, everyone will think you're cool if you smoke weed. And she goes like, I only do edibles. <laughs> I need to... Hang on a second. I need to tab over here and quote that right now because that was too freaking funny. Hang on. Heather Blossom. I could convince Princess Luna to do... <laughs> oh, Don't frick. make me laugh. I'm painting my nails. It's going to come out <laughs> shitty. Okay, Brian, this just... episode so far, you have to get someone to cl to edit this one into some shorts. This oh, one's yeah. going to be We're too do... hilarious. Thankfully, thankfully, I'm starting to get some help. So hopefully, something will uh, will come of that soon. This is why Emerald did your job. This is what Emerald did his job. I need everybody else to do who said they were going to help to do their freaking job. Um, <laughs> let's see here. I love those guys. I'm very grateful. But at some point, we got to see some results here. Let's see here. What else have we got in the chat before we move on? Um, nothing of note. So we're going to move on. Heather, do you want to take this one? Sure, can, I think I can read it. Uh, the significance of Lavra and Bonbon's relationship to the LGBTQ community. I, I talked about this a little off stream, but uh, I'll get yeah. into it after I'm done reading. By Marmalade. Mm, that's a good name. You should have done Marilade, make it a pony pun. I can't help but gush over the sheer adorableness of Lyra and Bomon as a couple. I love that for you. That's cute, just knowing that you are. Their chemistry is undeniable, evident in the subtle glances and affectionate gestures they share whenever they're on screen together. Honey, I gotta say, you have the shipper goggles on, and I like that. It's, it's like they have great. this magical connection that radiates warmth and love. Seeing them together brings a smile to my face every time, and I can't help but feel a sense of joy knowing that they're found happiness in each other's company. But beyond their undeniable undeniable cuteness they hold a special significance for many fans myself included the portrayed as a loving supportive couple within the mlp universe has helped numerous individuals in the lgbtq plus community to accept and embrace themselves seeing characters like them represented in a positive light on a widely beloved show provides a sense of validation and empowerment Lara and Bamon's relationship sense serves as a beacon of hope for those struggling with their own identity showing that love knows no bounds and that everyone deserves to be loved lo to love and be loved for who they truly are look i'm gonna say it Boy. I like that this is such a positive thing for you, but I feel like this, like I was talking about this before the stream. I feel like as a form of representation, Lyra and Bonbon are a whole lot of nothing. Like, uh, don't get me wrong. I like the two characters individually. They've been fun sometimes, but officially addressing their relationship has bro. Like you're giving them too much credit. They didn't do much. They had a proposal in the background. It was really only a nod and it wouldn't have been a thing unless the uh, if the fans hadn't have made it a thing on their own. Like the fandom made the Lyra Bonbon bon ship the ship that you love because they're the ones that made all the meaningful content surrounding it. It's just, it, I feel like they really just didn't do anything other than just be like, hey, the fans are doing this. Do this so they'll be happy. Like, it, I like that it, it, you're so happy with it and it's done a lot of good things for you. I just feel like, uh, I, I don't know. I just feel like it was just not really done with the intention of that in mind. I'm glad it did that despite that. So 
that's something. But yeah, I feel like Lyra and Bonbon, bon, it wasn't a fleshed out relationship. It was just some, it, it was Hasbro throwing the fandom a bone is what it felt like to me. They had one actual appearance where they spoke. And that yeah. was in the Slice of Life episode. Oh, wait, Lyra. And it was about them lying to each other. It was Bon Bon lying to her best, quote unquote, best friend. She had to. It had a quick resolution at the end. There, There's no evidence of love and support between them. Yeah, it wasn't a well-developed relationship. It was it was something they did for the fans. And I guess that's enough for most people. And I'm glad that's enough for them. DJ, didn't you read the Agents of Smile book? No. I haven't read any of the books. I own them all, but oh. we need but more time to read. You were you were useless to me. See, is what you get I... for trying to be a VTuber and playing those dang video games. You should be reading the Agents of Smile instead. And tell me what the shipping dynamic is like in there. I am uh, fulfilling you know... a stream request. They redeemed me to play all of Mass Effect, so I'm playing all of Mass Effect, and no Andromeda does not count. It is not Mass Effect. Okay, I, I, I forgot you were a VTuber, man. Yes, I stream twice a week. I'm sorry. Oh, it's pre- it's pre- it's late for you guys. It's probably like I go like after midnight for you guys anyway. So. Oh God, yeah, that's really long. Yeah, I basically yeah, but... start the same time you usually do on Saturday, Heather. Oh. So so like your nine o'clock stream is when it's nine o'clock when it's nine o'clock here is when I stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I should probably update your link in my link tree to from your Fim Fiction account to your Twitch account so more people can go see you. Yeah, you can, although I did yeah. finally just post a new story on Fim Fiction. So that's been nice. Yeah, and I've had that tabbed. I got to get around to reading it. I'm sorry, man. But hey, oh, it's um, only two chapters in. I, I, I'm, I'm going for a slow burn on this one. It's an old rewrite, so... Okay, well, let me know if you let me know if you uh, want help looking it over. Uh, sure. If you feel like it, throw your uh, Twitch in the chat so everybody knows to go watch you on Twitch. Uh, but all right, so my turn. How inflammatory should I be? Because I think we all know I could be very inflammatory about this right keep now. Keep it minor to mild, Brownie. Be chill. Okay. Okay. And we, everyone, was, everyone at this point knows you don't like the ship. Yeah. Yeah, so don't retread old territory. <laughs> All right. Um and that so yeah, I I think it came out of nothing. I think the shipper goggles are too much, uh are too saturated, uh they're making you blind to everything else. I'll go with Heather and say, Yeah, I'm glad it did it, your projection was able to help you come to terms with yourself in whatever way. I don't like LGBT representation in kids' shows. I don't I don't want that normalized cuz it was so subtle I doubt any child noticed it. Yeah, but then they 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 made it explicit towards the end there, but um Did they though? It's still a blink in your miss. I didn't even see it on the first time I, I saw didn't the episode. Either. I was just like, "Wait, that happened?" I didn't see so it until react- the reaction it. channels I watched paused the video because they somehow caught it. So if we didn't notice it, fully functional adults, I doubt kids saw it. I noticed it. Yeah, yeah, but you're also you're you. you. You're you. You're not a child. What is that? What is that supposed to mean? I'm me. <laughs> you're you're taking me you whatever know, you want, you know, Brony. You know exactly what it means. Oh, uh, okay. You know what? I'm gonna take it for. I'm gonna say that's racist. <laughs> that sure, honey. Sure. If you're just play gonna. The if you're just. Yeah, I will play the victim. Y'all are being racist right now. <laughs> The most kids might see is the brief glimpse of it in the newspaper in the final episode. Yeah. I didn't notice it then either. I noticed because they hung on it for like an extra second and because it was just like kind of front and center there. I don't, I don't But the original that. proposal in the Big Mac and Sugar Bell episode, I did not see it until rewatchers paused it. It's like, oh. And huh. it was, it was, that came out of nowhere. Cool. Yeah, a lesbian proposal in the background of a still heteronormative relationship getting its thing on, you know? So, yeah, I don't think you have anything to worry about. Alrighty then. Uh, Rusty says, I read The Agents of Smile. There's no obvious shipping between the two. They still play it safe with them being best friends. 
Mega Buster Shepherd says, I prefer Lyra's human obsession to her relationship with Bon Bon. And Ooh, I still that obsess is, over the anthropology a, song. That is that a song is a pure, banger. That is a pure fandom thing. That is just really, something the it, fandom made that up. Was, that was one of the silliest things the fandom ever made up. The only thing that's that's <laughs> even close to as silly as that that the fandom made up is the fact that Lyra and Bon Bon are, are shipped together in the first place. No, we had some like, good stories. As, I mean, anthropology alone is great. As, yeah, I love yeah, that song. Right, as, as much as I prefer Background Pony. As much as I... Um, yeah, you as just much have as to I, have something... As much I as I read dislike, Background Pony, but again, I have the book. <laughs> it is so long. It is so it's long. And it can be it can be hard to read, but it's a good story. Anyway, the um, as much as I dislike the Lyra Bond Bond ship, I dislike the Lyra is obsessed with humans thing way more. Yeah, because it came that now that really really came from nothing. It came from like her sitting in a funny way in one episode for two seconds. At yeah. least the Lyra Bonbon bon thing, people started like, oh yeah, look, Lyra and Bonbon in the background, always next to each other. Time to ship them because that's like they, logical. They sure are that's, how, each other. that's how you know that the Brony fandom has some has some rampant untreated autism, <laughs> where well, things uh -oh. like that start happening. Yeah, we know. We know this, having been in the fandom for so long, some of us since the beginning. But freaking, what was the ratio like? One out of five bronies is autistic. One out of three. It's 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 like nine out of ten. It's literally Jesus. nine out of ten. Ninety percent of bronies are autistic. Yeah. Autists. If, if you didn't know aut that, get checked. Autists make up less than ten percent of the whole population. In bronies, it is 90. I think we got all the autists. We, I mean, well, fandom in general attracts autism. Or, or you know, or people with autism are prone to fandom activities and behaviors like like what we see in, in Lyra Bond shipping or Lyra is obsessed with humans or any other typical fandom behavior that you see, you know, we see it in a, in a lot of fandoms. Some fandoms have it worse. I'll still say Sonic is uh Sonic the Hedgehog is way more autistic. Sonic in its the Hedgehog fandom. is always way worse. I want to yeah. just one thing I see in chat about this. Mega Buster Shepard said Lyra Bond is like Apple Dash, a whole lot of nothing really. Excuse me, Apple Dash and Rainbow Dash are actually friends and have talked to each other. I can see where people got that one from. <laughs> like we, there are two main characters. We see them all the time. It's at least a little more than like two, like one dimensional. It's at least two dimensional. I get it. I get it. There was never any romantic spark at all for me, but I get where people like came up with it. Okay. Uh, Rusty is asking for source of the autistic claim. And this one I actually have on hand. Uh, the Brony, the, the herd census is, con is an actual study, uh, psychological university funded study of the Brony fandom. And they ran for a good few years. I don't think there's, they're still running, uh, but they would do the herd census. And it was a, it was a, uh, uh, a, uh, a survey that you would fill out yourself and hopefully you're, you know, you're being honest with your uh, gender, age, how you got into the show, things like that, right? And um, and they gave you the option to take that that personality test. I forgot the name of that. It assigns like a four-letter code to you. And uh, they said that, uh, and I believe it was 2013. Um, and, uh, the, these results got sort of replicated a lot over the course of the, of the multi-year study, because they would do it every year for a good few years, but I believe it was either 2013 or 2014 where they, where they had you take that, that test and got your four letter code. And it, it, I believe it was the, the INTJ code or something like that. Don't exactly quote me on this. I might be misremembering these minutiae details of it, but it was the, it was the code that was very commonly associated with autists or, or, or people on the autism spectrum, both high functioning and low functioning. And, and that's where they said, yeah, uh, we, uh, we see this personality type and these levels of autism, uh, 
in only like 10%, in less than 10% of the population. But when it comes to the Brony fandom, we're seeing numbers darn near 90 and in excess of 90%. The Myers-Briggs, thank you very much, Blue Griffin. Willie's in says, I think autism is overdiagnosed and simply have too many poor social skills and antisocial pro That I can get behind to a certain degree. Um, autism has a physical diagnosis as well. Like there's not just mental aspects to it. There's also physical aspects to it. Like you're, you're um, the, uh, the having trouble filtering uh, audio stimulants, a sensitivity to light, uh, a resistance to temperature. <laughs> like, like the, like an actual yeah, that was a basal, funny one. basal, basic body temp, basal body temperature is slightly higher for some reason. Uh, so yeah, there are physical attributes to it that you can, that you can use to help diagnose it. But yeah, for the most part, um, and it, it, it does come out of social skills and things like that like i like to picture it like an rpg slider you you get 20 points to work with you can put some into intelligence some into social skills some into this that or the other thing right but you only have so many points so you're naturally going to end up with more if, if you have more in like the engineering side you're likely going to have less in like the social side and that's how that's how that sort of thing forms and but the beauty about being human is that you can rewrite your brain to like if you're mix if you're missing these skills you can learn these skills and if you're um and if it's if it's debilitating you can learn to if your handicaps are debilitating you can learn to overcome and manage them you just have to put forth the effort what we end up seeing most of the time is people being lazy and blaming all of their personality uh, their toxic personality traits on their autism, and that's why they can never change. I take great pleasure in beating the frick out of those people. I went on the rant again. <laughs> well, move on, honey. I want to. I want to. Uh, you know, close out this stream since you can make me some food. I'm starving. Yes. Yeah. In fact, I think we will close out. Uh, uh, there's still one more soapbox to do. So Equestria Daily, you got to give me, you got to release more community soapboxes so I can uh, farm you for content. <laughs> so I'm going to go on Equestria right now and I'm going to put something in there. I'm like, hey, put my shit. Yeah. Paladin, no, I'm not suggesting that only autistic people can like My Little Pony. That's certainly not the case. I'm sorry. I'm just saying yeah, that I'm apparently neurotypical. Yeah, I'm just saying that they're that they're the f people in the fandom are more likely to be autistic. That's all I'm saying. But as I've as I've learned more about it and as I've observed other fandoms, I've come to realize that just fandom in general is going to attract these types of people. That's just how it works. It's so, um, DJ, what do you think? You got any thoughts to close out the stream for tonight? Um, I guess that I can't wait for the shorts. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to, we're going to, this one needs here. to be edited down into some fun bits. <laughs> Uh, guys in, uh, out there in the stream, you're welcome to get clips and s of the streams and send them to me. So, so uh, if there was something you found particularly funny or interesting, and I'll I'll turn it into a short. I get I get, there's one short I've I've been sitting on. It's a, it's a meme I made of the other analyst months ago, and I I gotta upload it, but I I haven't done it yet because I'm lazy. Anyway, uh. I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed the stream tonight. Uh, it was some great interaction with the chat. Did you guys have fun tonight talking about this stuff? This was yeah, great. I had time. Very good. So we're very grateful to everybody who supports the channel monetarily, especially the $10 and up tier, such as Heather and DJ, who are with us tonight. There's also Shady Oak, Auto Knight, Emerald, Senko, Rain, Billy, Alden, Easy Mode, Kanto, Mr. Sonic, Alicia, Kalbeck, Star Chaser, Venture Core, Willy Zinn, Icandis, Volpecula, Raptor's Talon, Jimmy, and Dark Malcontent. Check out all their links in the link tree because they make some pretty good stuff too, especially DJ who's a, a freaking VTuber and a freaking film fiction writer. Pretty good one at that. Uh, mm. And if you want to get on the show uh, suggest your topics and suggest your games. I would love to have you for as little as a dollar a month. Check out my link tree also in the description to see how you can support the channel and what you get in return. With that, uh, I'm going to go cook some burgers. 
so I can get some real food in me today as well as Heather. And then she's going to be streaming. Uh, what are you doing tonight, Heather? I'm doing a video game. Awesome. You guys want to so, know which one? Yeah, tell us. All right, everybody, you're hearing this. Before everyone else, I announced that the game that I'm playing this month is Spyro the Reignited Trilogy. Nice. Yeah, so go subscribe to Heather Blossom's channel and uh watch her stream tonight we're gonna be we're gonna i i may or may not be there to hang out but we'll be there uh it, it's always a lot of fun watching her play these games so with that stay safe guys